It isn't a coincidence that both at the Microsoft conference and now again at the Ubisoft conference we get to see gameplay from characters that are already level 30. Massive and Ubisoft knows that The Division 1 was very much lacking uh, when it came down to the end game. They know it was one of the biggest issues with the game at launch and now they're doing everything that they can to try and convince people that The Division 2 will not make that same mistake. Uh, from the random encounters that they've showed off in the open world to the specializations for your character after reaching level 30 to having clans, to having 8 player raids, to having another dark zone. They have been pushing the idea that this game is going to have content. A lot of it, even if you're done with the story quite fast. Uh, and if that's not enough, they will be adding more through DLC, through frequent updates. Uh, and the best part about those is, is that they're going to be free. There's not going to be a season pass, you don't have to pay for the DLC. Now this all, it sounds very promising, especially for somebody like me who will most likely be done with the story quite fast. So I thought I would sort of break everything down that they've revealed so far, explain to you how some of these things are going to work and then also give you my thoughts on them. So yeah, first up, specializations. What are they? How do they work? Uh, okay, so let's get to it. In a Division 2, players will not have a signature skill. So no tech link, no blue link, no recovery link. Those things will be removed from the game. And instead, once the players reach level 30 with their character, they can choose a, a specialization. As far as we know, there are three different specializations. There could be more at launch. There could be more added with DLC. But for now, they've only shown off three. So we're going to go with that number. Uh, and they've shown off the survivalist, the demolitionist and the sharpshooter. And each of these will come with their own unique signature weapon and that will replace the signature skill that we used to have. Uh, these weapons are very heavy with very limited amount of ammunition that can change the tides of a fight so to speak. You should treat these weapons as sort of an ultimate ability but then with a twist to it. The survivalist gets uh, a crossbow with an explosive dart on it. The demolitionist gets a grenade launcher that he can kind of spam a bit before he has to reload. And then the sharpshooter gets a 50 caliber sniper rifle that can penetrate through multiple enemies. Now that sounds pretty good, but there's a little more to these specializations than you might think because it's not like an ultimate ability that you just pick and equip and then that's it. Each of these specializations, they have their own unique leveling system to them. You have to play with these weapons, you have to play with the specializations to advance with them, so to speak, to progress with them. Uh, and as you do, you will unlock more unique skills and more talents and more bonuses that are then available to your character to equip, like specific versions of a different skill. For example, you have a Seeker Mine, and now the Seeker Mine does something very different. Uh, they haven't really given any concrete examples yet, but that's how you should really think about it. They change the very core features of some of your gear. And this sounds very much like classes almost, classes in the division. The difference is, however, is that choosing one of these specializations has it doesn't lock you in it doesn't it isn't a permanent choice you can always swap specialization on the fly uh, you can go from demolitionist to sharpshooter in just a couple of seconds much uh, much like you can change up the signature skills whenever you're playing the division one and progression isn't lost when you swap specialization so somebody that's been playing the game for a while he will have maxed out every single specialization already uh, and this has all the benefits from those specializations if he wants to equip one of them and thus he's you know more able to adapt to different situations it's you should see it as three different trees of progression uh, that give you new stuff to play around with that you can just complete. And once you've completed them, then you actually have access to all of the content in the game, so to speak. Now, I've seen some people comment that they aren't too happy with what they're seeing here uh, because, you know, they fear that ultimately the specialization system will limit build diversity and simplify the game. Uh, and I, I could understand that. That's something that popped up on my mind as well. But what I want you to know and what put my mind to rest as well is that this specialization system will be something that goes on top of everything else that we already know from the Division 1 in terms of gear, stats, weapons, talents, all those things. Not only do they not go away, but the developers also decided to double down on those. Uh, in the footage that Eric's recorded over at his playtime at E3, we can see him picking up some purple gloves which have armor, stability, LMG damage, weapon damage, damage to elites, and even some stuff that we don't quite know what it does yet. Uh, and this is also only a purple item, not a high-end item or a gear set item, which have even more stuff to them, such as you can see here from the IGN gameplay where they pick up a high-end chest with a massive list of stats and things that you can do with it, including a talent 
and two, mod slots. So the specialization system doesn't replace any of that. In fact, it does only seem to get more complicated. <laughs> The idea is, is that, you know, you get a signature weapon with the specialization and some unique skills and talents that you could potentially use to further min-max your build and that will then replace the signature skills. I personally think it's a good change for many reasons. I never really was too big of a fan of the signature skill abilities in the Division 1. Uh, it, just, it just felt kind of cheesy all the time. Somebody could just pop a blue and then he would be unkillable for about 10 seconds. That's not going to happen in the Division 2 because the moment that he pops his ultimate, he just grabs a pretty strong weapon, but he still has to land his shot. So yeah, I think, I think it's an improvement. Although it's, of course, hard to say for sure without having seen the whole system in its entirety. Now, as I've said before... Uh, specializations isn't the only thing coming to the end game uh, for the division 2 that they've revealed so far uh, it's also going to be filled with stuff to do as they've said for example both in the microsoft demo and in the gameplay release at the ubisoft conference we can see them fighting all these enemies over a control point this is one example of a new activity that they talked about where the enemies are supposedly taking over city areas by themselves apparently this whole thing is not scripted it's on a mission and then it's your job to take the area back as sort of sort of like a landmark i guess uh, as as we know them in the dz but they've mentioned that the npcs are dynamic although i'm waiting for more info to really double down on that because we've heard the term dynamic in video games before it could mean a whole lot of things so i'm not i'm not going to comment too much about this but what i can say for sure is that the division 2 will also have eight player raids at launch as part of their most difficult content and that is definitely something that i can get behind we don't have too much information yet on raids on what we can expect from them and i don't believe that we will actually get information because raids uh, and their content is usually the type of thing that the developer keeps very quiet about they want everything to be a surprise and a puzzle when the players set foot in it for the very first time so for this one we're really just going to have to be patient to see how good that content really is Clans is another thing that's also being added to the game, probably to make it easier to actually get a team of 8 players together, because that can be quite a hassle. Uh, we already saw the first signs of clans during the reveal at the Microsoft conference, where all the players had ETFs uh, within brackets in front of their names indicating that yeah uh, they are part of some sort of clan and it seems like you might even be able to create custom logos for your clan as we can see in the menu here although that part is still very much speculation i'm not going to confirm that here the dark zone also makes a return and in this newer footage that we got yesterday we can also see uh, what seems to be the walls of the dz i'll talk about the location and that stuff in a future video because i'm sort of waiting for a little bit more information and i just want to make a separate video on the dark zone because the dark zone is also apparently coming with a whole bunch of reworked ideas but yeah the confirmation that the dark zone is in the game it's very reassuring to me i know not everybody was a big fan of the dz but honestly i really cannot imagine a division game without a dark zone it would have been a really 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 big bummer for me if the game did not have a dark zone uh, but yeah, moving on, something that was also announced at the Ubisoft conference uh, is that the developers will be adding content to The Division 2 with three big patches that will drop every three months for the first year after its release. They will be adding new story, new missions and new map expansions with this DLC, all that sort of stuff. And the best part about it is, is that uh, all of this content is going to be coming to the game for free. Again, doubling down on the focus of making sure that The Division 2 has enough content to keep players playing this time around. And the last part, uh, the free DLC, it may sound like a godsend, but I'm a little bit iffy about this if I'm going to be honest with you. Free DLC probably means no season pass, which probably means that they will be looking for another source of revenue to pay for the DLC. Which might be loot boxes and microtransactions. You, you can see how this is a double-edged sword, right? Like this... Uh, we don't really know much about uh, the monetization model that they have right now, and I'm not going to get ahead of the facts. Uh, and in fact, uh, The Division 1 has loot boxes right now. They are cosmetic only, and I think that they're actually pretty fair, uh, at least in my opinion. They're non-intrusive, they're never in your way, they don't mess with the in-game progression system. And if this is something that we can expect to see in The Division 2 as well, I could live with that. However, it wouldn't be the first time that uh, some game went way overboard with their microtransactions and their monetization model at the cost of the player base. So what I would like to know and what I would like them to talk about right now with the announcement that all the year one DLC is going to be free is what type of online shops we can expect to be in the Division 2. 
that is still something that I think they need to answer. Now overall, I am a pretty positive about all of this. It seems they very much created this game with the hardcore audience and the end game in mind and are pulling whatever string they can to make sure that the Division 2 actually has a lot of content this time around. Especially for somebody like me, again, this is very good news, knowing that the game will at least have some sort of future and will not just be dead a few weeks after launch. It's, it's, it's a good thing to know. Um, of course, I still have many questions for now. It's mostly talk. We haven't seen too much endgame activities yet, at least not too many different ones. Uh, so for now, I'll just keep my eye open. But yeah, uh, I just want to say it's definitely all going in the right direction, uh, at least from what we've seen so far. And if it keeps going like this, then I think we could uh, we could potentially set ourselves up for a really cool experience. But yeah, uh, that's going to be it for this video. The developers are going to live stream today. Uh, so I'm probably going to follow that and then come back at you tomorrow with a video rounding that up. Uh, but yeah, for now, uh, I'm just going to have to let you go. As always, I'll see you all later or... Like they say in the Netherlands, see you later.